Roll call, please. Commissioner Mendoza. Present. Vice Chairperson Harvey. Present. Chairperson Hammerness. Present. Let the record reflect Commissioner Rivera and Commissioner Abadi are not present. Hopefully soon. <laughs> Hopefully soon. Please stand the pledge of allegiance. Mr. Hardy, would you lead us today? Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and the new republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? No, Mr. Excellent. All right, so I've got to read this for the sake of reading it. Uh, public appearances, B1, matters not appearing on the agenda. If you wish to address the Planning Commission concerning any item not appearing on the agenda and within the Commission's jurisdiction, please, rise, please raise your hand and acknowledge and be acknowledged by the chairperson, and at that time, state your name and address for the record. The chairperson reserves the right to place a time limit on each person's presentation of three minutes. It is requested that no longer present that longer presentations be submitted to the commission in writing. Is there anybody here tonight who has wishes to address the commission that is not on the agenda? I will take that as a no. All right, let the record reflect, 634, that uh, Commissioner Rivera has uh, graced us with his presence. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everybody. B2, matters on the agenda. If you wish to address the Planning Commission concerning any items appearing on the agenda within the Commission's jurisdiction, please raise your hand and be acknowledged by the chairperson. And at that time, state your name and address for the record. The chairperson reserves the right to place a time limit on each person's presentation of three minutes. It is requested that longer presentations be submitted to the commission in writing. I'm going to guess that you're here tonight for items that are on the agenda. That'd be correct? Excellent. Excellent. Uh, consent calendar. Uh, all items appearing under consent calendar agenda will be acted upon by the planning commission. One motion, discussion. Uh, should any commissioner or other person request an item be considered separately at that time it will be taken up and at that time determined by the chairperson that would be me so we have on the consent agenda I believe tonight is just the minutes for October 26th 2022 and November 9th 2022 has everybody reviewed the minutes as necessary Chairman, I wasn't here on November 29th, so it's my intent to abstain from that one. But as this is one item, should I abstain from both? Or do um, you want to separate them? Or? Well, November 9th, not the 29th. The, I'm sorry, the 9th, November 9th. We can do them separately. Yeah, because I, I, I can't vote on that one. I wasn't here. So. We can do that. All right, is there a motion to approve the minutes for October 26, 2022? I'll make, I'm sorry. I'll make the motion. It's been moved. Is there a second? I second it. It's been moved and second. I call for the vote. Chairperson Hammerness, uh, yes. just real quick. Um, you mentioned the 22nd. On here we have the 26th. Well, you know, it's one okay. mistake was made, now two mistakes <laughs> I, I called it the 29th. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to clarify that for the I, I, uh, <laughs> Nope, nope, my bad. October 26th. So let that reflect in the, uh, in the, in the motion. So call for the vote. All right, motion passes with three yeses. We have one abstained, and that would be Chair Person Ham, or I'm sorry, Chair, I, I can't even I, speak I, tonight. I, 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 <laughs> okay, it wasn't me. <laughs> I don't think. Correction, we have one that abstained, and that would be Commissioner Mendoza. For the 26th. Um, no, I did yes on this one for the 26th. Oh, I'm it's saying abstained on yours. Okay, can you clear it? I, I can clicked yes. Clear it and let's just revote. Yeah, we can do that. Isn't that let's like try one more time. Yes. We could just raise our hands or do a silent <laughs> ballot. 
that would be a no. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see if this will look right. I mean, it's still a pass if we can't do that, so. Go ahead and revote. All right, let's try one more time. And There's... I'm still showing Miss Mendoza as an abstain. I'm still doing the abstain. Okay. All right. Well, For the just... record, um, Miss Mendoza, can you please state your vote on this item? Yes. Okay. For the record, I'll let it reflect. This agenda item for October 26th has passed for zero with Mendoza as a yes. All right. So let's try. I need a motion to approve the minutes for November 9th, 2022. Is there a motion? A motion to uh, approve the uh, agenda for December. November. Uh, November. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets a turn. <laughs> so, right, concentrate, take a breath. <laughs> November 9th. I November 9th, 2022. <laughs> Is there a second? Um, we just realized that uh, Commissioner Harvey and I were both gone, so we both have to abstain if we don't have a we can move it to the next meeting or we can push or wait it till we can push it back and if if commissioner uh, Abadi, Abadi yes. shows up we can take it up later in the at the end of the meeting so right. so for the record um the november 9th minutes will be tabled for now for, for now we can. For, for the moment yeah okay all right so we're gonna go ahead and cancel that. and help me remember to come back to that later if we if i forget we will do Do we need to have the tech guys check that real quick? Oh. Right Is there a on each other's? <laughs> because I was wondering about that, that maybe they, they were just reversed. Yeah, because my screen was showing yes, but it was showing up. And so guys in the back's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Chairperson like, Hammerness, uh, yes, if you would like to proceed. Oh, here we go. Let it reflect that Commissioner Abadi has uh, entered the building. 640. So I'd like to move to uh, approve the, uh, <laughs> the minutes for uh, November 9th, 2022. We can try that again. We already did October 26th. It's okay. We're doing the 29th now. And I need you to second it if you don't have any objections. No. So we will second it. Oh, I had a question. Uh, what was the result of the O Street abandonment? Whether they thought that maybe the city owned it? What, what was the result? Would that be part of the part of Approving the minutes, or do we want to push that? No, that would not be okay. Appropriate well, I'm question just curious this, because oh, no, no, I understand, but I, I think that's the appropriate question for is it, approving can the minutes. Uh, my, my understanding is that it, that it's right of way and not owned in fee by the city, okay. so it'll be perceived.
Six. They won, I think. October with uh, two applicants on the same site. You uh, familiar with Mr. Velasco and Romero? By name, yes. I mean, okay. I've met them, but I our business is up. You guys are on the same on the same lot, sharing this portion of the same building. Uh, who's uh, who's the uh, owner of the uh, property? Property is Javier Sanchez. Okay, I'm just making sure because when when we had Mr. Velasco, Mr. Romero, they were kind of going back and forth as to who was the actual owner. Well, the the owner um, by title and, and recorded is Javier Sanchez, my father-in-law. Okay, all right. Uh, again, um, have patience with me. Uh, sure. I'm a simple man, and and is it's been we talked to you some time ago, and then we talked to to these two gentlemen. And they were kind of not sure. Um, matter of fact, we asked them who was who was in that that building over there in the southwest corner, and they weren't too sure as to what was going on with that building. Well, can you question my father-in-law? I don't have that information, and I, I wish I did. I, is there somebody actively living in there? I believe so. Yeah, and I the reason I ask is because now we have three different applications. Although your two of them would be per se, two of them would be under your name, and then I have these other two gentlemen. Uh, in the event that something goes sideways, there's going to be a lot of point, fingers getting pointed back and forth, and is, there's no resolution there, and the fingers get pointed back at the at the commission here. So I if just I, I want to... If I could, I'm glad you brought that up. One of the questions that was brought up that night that I don't think we ever got resolution on is if there's a fence separating that house from the property, because we had concerned about whoever's living in that property coming over towards your property. Is there a fence separating it? So there is interior access, but there's a side fence to the south side of the property. So they, they can walk out and, and enter. I mean, it's all within the fenced area, all within the same parcel. Uh, but there is a, I believe there's a western and a southern fenced area for that that building there. Sorry, Commissioner Rivera. Oh, that's just, fine. You brought up that and triggered no. that name. Um, okay, so we, we've asked and covered some of the questions from the from the previous applicant is um so we're gonna do uh we're the intent is uh, some some retail now correct that on was the, the north in the north half of the building correct about the north third of the building about 2,400 square foot roughly and, and when i did see this here uh last week um i i did start to go wait wait a minute we haven't I'm, I'm familiar with Mr. Sori. We, we talked to him here uh, about a year ago. Um, where is all the progress? And then I did notice in here, yes, you have guys did hit a wall per se because of uh, Second Street. So I, I had to, I had to back off there. How's that street? Beautiful. Nice street in the city. Especially with, <laughs> with hopefully, <laughs> especially hopefully with lots of trailers coming in, coming into the lot. So. We, we don't have that access, or we, we haven't had that use yet, but um, the city did a great job and a great service to the citizens by putting sidewalks in that area and saved me quite a bit of money, and I appreciate that as well. But that, That's why I bring it up. I hope that that's, that's moving forward. That helps out a lot. Yes. Customers will be like, hey, we need to drop off here. It's it's a nice road. It's, oh, a, okay. it's a very nice road. Um, so security cameras, you, you guys said that you you were waiting to, to finish off uh, some of those surfaces there. Uh, the reason I bring that up is... Uh, uh, we're going to store RVs, uh, sometimes some toy haulers, I assume, as well. Correct. And just by mere chance, uh, in those toy haulers, we'll have some of the same stuff that you will be retailing. Similar, yes. Yeah. Um, I always say never make an honest man dishonest, right? Especially, I mean, uh, the RV storage, 24 hours, seven days a week, correct? Correct. Um there was something here. Uh, no fabrication or welding will take place on site. Right. Um, do we need to distinguish there specifically no fabrication or welding for this applicant? Because we know there's going to be some welding and fabrication on the other half of the building. That being an auto body. Am I incorrect in even bringing that up? Honestly, don't want to speak to another person's business that I'm not familiar with. But for our business, we we don't have a welder on site. We will not have a welder on site. We don't fabricate our parts. We we retail. We're involved in retail sales and, and the installation of those parts, which are bolt on in nature. Well, the the other uh, conditional use permit for the other uh, person would include that. So that 
So to say there can't be any on site is kind of an ambiguous term because we have one site with multiple businesses on it. So then the kind of question is, is how do you decide how far is too far on that? They're just associated with this. I think we're I think we're going down a, a road maybe that we should we're going not should going stay away from. Yeah, I think we're, we're going into yeah, the weeds. I think we need to right, just let the if there's a problem down the road, then when it so we'll deal with that problem when it comes. Okay. Yeah, no, I I wasn't. I would just do it out there to. <laughs> no, no, but it does. You you are right. It does definitely uh, kind of a conflict between the two CUPs, but uh, each one has its own specific spot in the building, and if the as long as the one thing stays in their part of the building, and I'm understanding the wall between the two is not just a wall, it's a firewall. Right, with no no door, no access from right. one side to the other. So hopefully that will uh, uh, solve that problem or answer that question. But keep going, you're doing good. No, that's, that's <laughs> I, you know what, just the fact that there was the outline that, you know, they had been waiting for Second Street and then the gentleman, answered my question as to um, we know we have a name. I'm sure it's on record, but finally, you know, one of the applicants was able to say, okay, this is who owns that. This is what's going on at that corner house. Um, I, that was kind of left in the dark with the other two applicants, and obviously you, you know you're familiar with the other two applicants. Uh, I just need to put all of those pieces together. Uh, again, seeing this last week in, in another application for this site, um, again, I, I was a bit apprehensive, but now talking to, to yourself uh, and making all those connections, uh, I, I'm fine. Having multiple CUPs on one piece of property is kind of a unique situation for us. I don't think we've seen that. I don't recall ever seeing it. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, just in regards to the cameras, I, I do want to point out there are cameras on site now, but there will be additional cameras in the future once the facility's improved to the extent of the CUP. Yeah, I, I'm I'm sure I just, it was another thing when I saw, okay, retail, their retail business is very related to what they're going to be storing there. Um, just an FYI, a consideration, uh, but you seem to already have all the, uh, all the dots connected here. Uh, again, I just needed some reassurance. Thank you. Commissioner Body, have any, uh, Questions? I think it's just a, a unnatural uh, growth in what it already has. So it's the way things go in the sense of just letting them off. Well, not to mention if he's selling accessories, that's tax dollars, and tax dollars are good for the city. So that's hard, that's to, that's, self -tax. Plus. That's hard to buy. That's hard to fight. Um, so I'm just going to ask some real simple questions here. Um, how long do you think it'll be, or what's your time frame for getting the lot squared away and getting your base in so you can actually start putting RVs on the lot? Well, I, I can answer the first part of that uh, okay. because there's several several aspects to it. Um, my understanding of the process after speaking with the city staff is we need to supply the grading plan. We've already supplied a, a site plan in the original CUP and had discussions um, it's been reviewed by, by city staff. Now we need to supply the grading plan. That'll be the next step, and we should be able to move forward with that within the next 60 days. Once that's completed, I don't know what the, the time frame is. It'll depend on workload of the engineering office that's going to conduct that. Then it has to go to the city staff for review, and then whatever the time frame is for any alterations to that plan. And uh, it's just kind of a back and forth at, at that point. I, I don't want to commit myself to a timeline other than I can tell you we're ready to proceed within the next 60 days to have the plan drawn up and submitted to city staff. I mean, we have city staff here that might be able to shed some light on the speed of that process. Yeah, this is um, pretty straightforward. Um, I don't anticipate anything over 60 days for review and all that. They, they, that's just the, if there's a, um, comments on, on the plans, no more than 60. Or we're lucky, might actually be able to store an RV by July. Be kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're not gonna be going to the dunes. Well, no, that's when you do Maybe your best storage river. work, yeah, though, is in the yeah, summertime. That's when you do your best storage. <laughs> so, okay. uh, all right, yeah, that well, was... I, I wish you well so you can get your business running. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have no other 
questions. Anybody else have anything else? Staff, anything else? Okay, I'm going to close public hearing at this time, uh, 6.58. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward uh, CUP. Was anything uh, on the uh, in here from the fire department for this particular one uh, that I could see? Fire department doesn't have anything. For, yeah, thank you. So with that, let's uh, uh, call for a motion. I'll move to approve amendment to CUP 20-05 for Robert Sawyer, um, for owner of Dunes to Desert located at 408 East 2nd Street to allow the use of off-road accessories, retail sales, and installation services. There a second. I'll second it. Take, take Commissioner Abadi. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Call for the vote. There it is. Motion passes 5 0. All right. Sir, you are on your way. The next step of, uh, hope you have lots of mylanta and aspirin. <laughs> D2, subject, public hearing, discuss an action, conditional use permit 22 02 for. Dennis Chavez to allow the use of a trucking storage facility located at 426 East 4th Street, uh, APN 064-194-066. I'm going to open. Come on. Come on. All right, I'll go back to that. I'm going to open public hearing at this time at 7 o'clock. Staff report. Updated um, conditional use permit 22-02 is for applicant Denise Chavez, owner of JD Freight Forward. And this CUP is to allow for the operation of tr uh, truck storage facility located at 426 East 4th Street. Um, Ms. Chavez is proposing to store two to four trucks at the project site for a limited time. The project was duly noticed in the Hopeville Tribune and Calexico Chronicle on December 1st, 2022, and property owners within 300 feet of the project site were noticed as well. The project is categorically exempt from the requirements of the California Environment, Environmental Quality Act under Section 15322 for infill development projects. Staff and Ms. Chavez are in attendance for any questions? Chavez, Miss Chavez, excuse me, join us at the podium. Oh, that's Denise, not Dennis. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Let's Thank start you. on the right. I certainly do. Thank you. Um, the one of the con I have like three items that I wanted to discuss. The first one is um, this property is on fourth and I it looking at the surrounding streets it looks like these trucks are going to be exiting and going to the highway but at fourth street there is no intersection is has that been taken into account that if there's increased truck traffic trying to cross right there at fourth street and trying to get across because there's no turn lanes no the trucks coming in and going out right there by the fourth street the fourth and highway 86. Because I don't see any other way for them to get out. Other, they they either have to go north and go through a residential area, or they go west and have to cross over to Highway eighty six. West, go west. And so they'll be going up over Highway eighty six with the trucks and everything. I'm a little concerned about that. <laughs> um, I guess if they're all making right turns, I guess we're yeah. okay. Um, the next one has to do with, um, because there was no noise study done, I guess you contacted the res the three residences along the, the path right there. In looking at the signatures, 
the, the what they signed didn't exactly say what it was that they were signing other than a saying, you know, yes, we're okay with it. It didn't really say what this project involved, that if there's a potential of noise creation, increased truck traffic, how is it that they were notified what it was they were signing off on? I went to her, uh, I went to her, I'm sorry, I went, I went um, with each uh, person and I explained to them also. And they said it's okay and they give me some phone numbers. Generally, when we have somebody sign, it says uh -huh. on there what it is that they're signing. And then, yes, reminder to the commissioner, we um, we set the notices within 300 feet of the property as well. Um, and we, um, on the notice, states the uh, the uh, type of use that will be placed in that vicinity. And we're con we've confirmed that these three people are the property owners and not renters? The only member that was... to him there's always been that question about the disconnect if we're notifying the property owners within 300 feet it's not necessarily that the people living there get notified because if they're tenants they may not know and then if they're the ones signing that they don't care <laughs> I mean they don't mind is it the same person is it the property owner that's signing saying they don't mind that's why I was, I, I was just wanted to bring that question up and then the, the third concern that I have is, I, I understand this is just a truck storage facility. Um, when the trucks are being dropped off or picked up, a big concern I have is, a, just not, not in a bad way, but truck drivers have a tendency to start up the truck and let it running. They either wait, leaving it on uh, to warm it up, or I don't know what, the, I'm not a trucker, so I don't know the purposes, but I do know that quite often you see truckers leaving their, the trucks running. Can, is there something that we can do to curtail that and make sure that, you know, a driver, when he goes in the morning at, what, what is the starting hours, like 7 in the morning or something like that, that they don't just start up the truck and leave it running when you have residences right across the street that are going to have to listen to these trucks running? Um, that's why we want to... Um, a recognition, you can... I can't hear you. Um, in your conditions of approval, uh, we have uh, a wall. It's a noise attenuation one. Actually, gets rid of enough noise of somebody leaving a truck running 15. Based on, on the um, technical status that we've seen, um, it, it does reduce um, the, the noise significantly, uh, especially if it's a uh, made of block. And at 600 feet away is the county yard with numerous trucks that I'm sure are starting much earlier than seven o'clock in the morning and idling and I would can imagine that they've either become very used to that or I'm just saying they're not this is going to be the only trucks in the area because the county yard is just down from there and it's they've got a lot of trucks there that uh, come and go on a regular basis um, excuse me Mr. Mendoza I did bring the property owner both of them, the other two names are our property, property owners. owners. Yes. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean. No, those were my concerns. I have a question for the applicant. You're wanting to store trucks. Is this like uh, where people want owners of the trucks or drivers of the trucks, they don't have a place to put their vehicle, so that's the purpose of your business? Yes, which is it's a parking so, yeah, so it's like you're renting space, oh. like a parking space. Oh, there are my trucks. They're your trucks? Uh -huh. Okay. So, so what business do you do with your trucks? Uh, it's a trucking company. I'm sorry? Trucking company? It's a semi-truck. Okay, and you're hauling goods? We're hauling um, building materials. B building materials. So you, need, you essentially need a place to park your vehicles. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so they will be leaving in the morning and coming back in the evening after they've done their daily route. Okay, I understand. Harvey? Um, so, as you just um, expressed, these will be only your trucks that will be utilizing the space. It won't be other company trucks. 
at any time. And um, in the staff report here, it says parking two to four trucks or trailers for a limited time. Is this a temporary type project or how should I interpret limited time? Leave at seven in the morning to go do work and they come back at nine o'clock. So it's just overnight. Is that how you mean by limited versus being a storage 24 hours? I have a question to staff, okay? In the conditions, you're asking the applicant to put in um, a mason wall, but we didn't ask that of the prior applicant last year, just a decorative wall, okay? What's the, like, the criteria to determine, what, and is the mason wall to be all four, four sides? Just the, just the front. Okay, just um, the front. Directly, yeah, the ones it's directly the And it's for the, the noise the, issue, the, right? That is correct. Okay, so the, the other three sides could be the fence. It right. all depends the location of it, which is within the industrial zone. If it's yeah. a heavy industrial and mm -hmm. surrounding it's all industrial, then um, that would be, you know, exempt from it. That okay, so the mason wall is only on the wall facing the road where the residential homes are. That at. is correct. Okay, and the purpose of it is to diminish the noise. That is correct. Okay. Uh, also here, I see that um, the staff recommended to conduct a noise study, but um, the applicant opted to forego the expense of the noise study. So in lieu of, you got the three signatures of the of the neighbors there um i guess my my comment to that is are those only three people that are going to be impacted by the noise because we're going to the west on fourth street and there is only three houses by that street Is it the staff that's we only sent notices to those three residents or we send in any any others are we doing within 300 feet um Three signatures from the closest to it, and we haven't heard back from any of the rest. We didn't receive any comp comments, and none of them are comments. here. Okay. And directly across, directly across from it's actually a park. So there's nobody directly across from that property. Okay. Cool. And then just my final um, comment is regarding um, the fire hydrant and. Um, the, re the requirement of the installation, but then applicant states that there's one 240 feet from the project site. Uh, county fire maintains that the measurement is on an approved route that would you that they would use and not a straight line. Could I get elaboration on that? Um, commission chairman, um, according to the fire code, approved route is the, is the route that a fire apparatus would take. Um, going across property lines um, or fencing, anything that a fire apparatus couldn't cross um, that wouldn't use in an in a emergency route wouldn't be something that we would take into account um, for being able to secure a water source for fire um, incidents. So um, that's, when we, when we look at that, it, it's, um, it's, there's two hydrants. Um, the two closest hydrants, one would be on L Street we would have to travel north down L Street onto 4th Street. Um, that's 562 feet of roadway, give or take, as an estimate. And the other one would be on 4th Street and South K Street. And that's seven, estimated 750 feet of length before reaching the property. Um, the 300 foot is, is kind of the set standard um, of hydrant spacing. Um, it's within the fire code and then within the city. Um, 
kind of been a, a constant every 300 feet. So there's not one within that 300 foot. Therefore, we would make that recommendation for a fire uh, hydrant to be installed. There aren't any fire hydrants in that entire area that are 300 feet apart. Anywhere. Nope. I drove around it extensively <laughs> the last two days looking for fire hydrants, and the whole area is completely underserved by hydrants. Yeah, correct. And that's what I said. The two closest ones are L, L Street and uh, L Street and 4th Street, or would be south of uh, 4th Street. And the other one is on 4th Street down um, kind of a, on the, it would be west of the county uh, road yard um, on 4th. Those would be the closest. I believe the apparatus carry enough four inch to be able to make at least a um, 500 foot lay. It would be close. <laughs> it shouldn't be. <laughs> we need to check. <laughs> uh, it should be 600 minimum on the engine. It should be. If, with that requirement, it's... Is there water laterals, I mean, a water mains and everything available for her to, to use? There's water availability directly in front of the property. I have a question. Why does this applicant have to bear the burden? Will this fire hydrant only be used at her property? Or will it enable the fire department to use it if there was a fire at the county facility or across at the residential areas? Is My it only exclusive for her, meaning that's her fire hydrant and you can't use it anywhere else? No, it would be a public hydrant. Then why is this applicant being asked to bear 100% of that burden if there's no other fire hydrants around? How, how did the city handle fires before if it occurred in that area? So the majority of hydrants, and I, I'll let staff speak or others yeah. speak for this, um, same as any subdivision or any new development that comes in, they're mm -hmm. responsible for adding the infrastructure um, for the public safety side of items. But the development has many structures on it and it gets passed to the buyers. So here we're just, and they all benefit from it. Well, here she's being asked to carry the load for all the neighbors. So I'm asking why, a new, if she didn't come along, there'd be no fire hydrant. That is correct. Okay. So I think there, uh, from my perspective, I think it's, um, should be shared, like figure out that the other ones have to contribute or that there's a, a discount for her. That's my position. It's also okay. bringing an additional use to the location. And that's why that's. Well, she's bringing in four trucks. She was building a five-story building or a huge industrial complex, I would say that putting in a hydrant would probably be justifiable. Putting in a few trucks for storage is not um, what I would consider to be the same level of fire load that a uh, major infrastructure project or major construction project would put. And for what it's worth, these areas have been zoned commercial for a hundred years. And there's probably been one or two water system upgrades since then. And at whatever time those were done, the city, for whatever reason, chose not to increase the infrastructure at the time those things were being done, which would make the areas more attractive to, well, attractive to commercial use. So to suddenly say we should subject this person to put in not only a masonry wall, but pay for the installation of a hydrant in an area that probably should have had one put in during the last upgrade, I think is a bit much for some trucks. Now, it, like I said, if she was building a 10,000 square foot warehouse or a five story building, that's a little different story. Um, but for curiosity's sake, what does it cost to put in a hydrant? 12 to 15,000. Big bucks. How much and does it cost to build a masonry wall? Probably twenty thousand. Today's In cost. Your feet, yeah, it is. It is. It is up, up there. Yeah. Let me ask you, how much does it cost to replace four trucks because one caught on fire? How much is it going to cost you? Can you recoup four trucks? It depends on our insurance coverage. But can you deductible. can you can you afford the downtime for the insurance to go through? You need those trucks to turn over every night, right? I know because I just came from the trucking industry. 
Okay, uh, I'm I'm the one guy that knows. Okay, you can't afford to lose all four of those trucks. Every day that they're on there, they they're earning. Any day they're not on the road, they're not earning. But if isn't you are this a, true a pretty big lot? It is a pretty big lot. And the yeah, trucks, it's a pretty big lot. So and the trucks think, could be if so the they trucks could be were like separated, several hundred feet apart. They're going to stack them as close as possible. Why? That's the way it goes. Are you going to stack them side by side? Park them side by side? Or spread them out a little or bit? Or spread there. them out. Like let, for let me, a, let me I'm add. a farmer. We've got 100 feet clearance between our stacks in order to have coverage. You probably have some something in your insurance coverage. All right? Otherwise, they'd consider it all one stack or all one truck. Okay? So you got lots of room there. Just keep it separate. Yes. Okay? It's to your benefit. May I ask what kind of building materials you're going to be hauling in? Echo? Sheetrock? Sheetrock. And the trucks are on that site. Are they loaded or are they empty? Empty. So the only fuel load is the trucks themselves? Well, sometimes they are um, loaded, but most of the time are empty. But stucco and sheetrock are not uh, highly combustible materials um, that I've learned. Um, and yeah, I'm going to restrain myself on that one. I know too much about the business, so I'll stay out of that a little bit there. Um, but I do think it's an excessive. Uh, request considering the nature of the use of the property and the fact that the city's had at least two opportunities in the last hundred years I would say to upgrade the water system and put the hydrants in uh, and I do believe there's a hydrant on the end piece of that property on the west side right which side west of of their property so you've got on um, on the street there I believe I remember seeing one there. Uh, the only hydrant that I noted during um, the site review and looking on uh, maps were on L Street west of the property and then down on uh, East 4th Street and K Street. Uh, and to to add to it, um, the fire code, um, if, if I may, I would like to read um, from the fire code. Um, Fire hydrant systems, it's chapter uh, 5, section 507.5, fire hydrant systems. Fire hydrant systems shall comply with section 507.5.1 through 507.5.6 and appendix C of the uh, by the approved method. 507.5.1 where required, where any portion of a facility or building herefore constructed or move into within a jurisdiction is more than 400 feet from the hydrant on a fire apparatus access road as measured by approved route around the exterior of the facility or building on site fire hydrant to main shall be provided where required by the fire code official. Um, what year is that code? What's that? What year was that code? This is 2019 California fire code. And that Probably the same code goes back multiple, multiple water. years. When was the last time the water system was upgraded in the uh, industrial area? Because I mean they've got newer hydrants. The hyd new they've got all new hydrants, so I'm guessing those weren't put on old mains. A location, I'm, I'm, yeah. Well, I have to ask Jackie for the historical record. Basically, before any of your time, uh, yeah, twenty years, at least, at least twenty. Because I know there was a large water system upgrade done twenty, twenty-five years ago, and I'm thinking the fire code probably said that twenty-five years ago. The city didn't bother do doing the fire code. What's that? The city didn't do it. Where a portion of the building here for constructed or moved within There's no the construction happening. So. Um, what we're looking at is a vacant lot at the moment. It's an open lot, and something is being constructed by means of moving in a whether a temporary office space or whether the hazard is brought into the jurisdiction. Okay, the build. Are you building a building on the on a, a vacant lot? Okay. So there's not a construction of a.
building going to happen? And just because a truck's going to be parked there, it's carrying fluid as far as diesel and oil. So it's a hazardous material, just like my car is that's parked out on the street. So during, during the, the site review, it was our understanding that there was going to be a temporary office building? Carport. Okay. Well, carport's not a building. Carport's just a roof. What's a carport for? For the truck. Well, just for one or two trucks. How big is the carport going to be? It's... I think it's 14, no, 20 by 14, I believe. So you could potentially put two trucks together underneath Not it? just one. One. Why do you want to build a carport? To cover the, from the sun, the trucks. You're going to cover one truck? And Only then... one, yeah. <laughs> That's all you got the money for right now. Yeah, as, yes, as right now. Cover the, uh, the cars of your drivers while they're gone during the day. Maybe they can park down there and then when they come back, take the car out and then put the truck. Can I ask what um, staff what triggered the requirement for an, a, tra a noise study? Um, the noise. Um, in, in other uses, past practices, um, we had a, a, a tracking company that was... Uh, that we received a lot of complaints because of the noise. I don't you remember the one on P Street uh, for Husto Felix. Uh, so we want to make sure that we have a technical study in hand to provide the, the commissioners uh, what the impacts and mitigation measures could be potentially be from this this business. That's what I recalled. So that's why I'm. That's what kind of made I I went back and thought about when I just see these three signatures on here when it comes back to getting complaints and hearing back from potentially hearing you know back from neighbors um and we don't have anything besides um three signatures on something that doesn't you know not an official study so but that's just my impression. my question are the county facility is it the rest of them about 600 feet does 600 the city get feet? complaints for the trucks going in and there? I do not recall. And it's has that county facility been there for a while? Quite. Oh, yeah. Quite. A long time, right? Yes, correct. Okay. And those people that live around there, they have to deal with it Monday through Friday. And you've got no complaints. Now, suddenly four trucks come in. And they come in, they probably leave in the morning and come in at night. Okay. You think those four trucks are going to break the camel's back? They Probably leave not. before the use. people leave for work, and they come in at night when people are ready to go to sleep. I don't think so. Yes, sir. Over when you were reading the fire code, number that was, I've heard several numbers tossed around 300 feet. I see in the staff report that they say, I gather, as the crow flies, there's a fire hydrant within 240 feet of the property. I heard you read 400 feet and also make reference to on-site. Is, is that? Yeah, it could different? be, it could be, it could be considered an on-site private hydrant um, if that's what the applicant chooses to do, um, but they would still need to connect to a city main. That's where the exp real expense I do believe it will be more expensive because more. of the length of the piping. This, this application kind of points to the fact that as we have all over this side of town in particular, situations like this where you have industrial zones, you have an industrial zone and then we're telling people that in order to park a truck in an industrial zone, it's not a permitted use. It's a conditional use. 
and the conditional use is what really triggers all of this discussion. Uh, uh, and, I th and I think the discussion has pointed out some of the unfairness because under the law, um, you, your con any condition you impose on a project, there's two, basically two, a twofold requirement. One, there has to be a connection between the condition that you're imposing and the need that's caused by the proposed project. Uh, and secondly, there has to be some proportionality. So um, I, I think on, on both counts, um, th there, there's, there could be some debate about whether or not parking a couple of trucks on an industrial lot would trigger a need for a fire hydrant. Uh, but I think more significant is whether or not parking a couple of trucks on an industrial lot triggering um, what sounds to me like some considerable expense in between the sound attenuation wall and a fire hydrant, whether it, there's really some proportionality there. My thought is uh, we have houses right across the street. What fire hydrant serving those houses? How many? Yeah, the city hasn't done its job yeah. to protect so, its people. All of a sudden now we're going to try and force onto a, a, an applicant that she has to go through this expense to install a fire hydrant to protect some trucks, but whoever built those houses or the city or whoever didn't provide them a fire hydrant for those houses right across the street. No, the hydrants in that area are pretty thin. Very thin. Is correct? That is correct. And the fact that you're, it is an industrial site, which kind of made me wonder why we're doing any of this to begin with. It's an industrial zone. Why are we conditional having a conditional use, use permit for an industrial zone that should allow this kind of activity in it in the first place? So your point is saying that maybe we need to reevaluate some of our zoning. I, I think the problem that someone brought up with respect to Peach Street, for example, is that that's a, that was an I-2 zone. And the problem arose because that I-2 zone along P Street uh, was there, obviously, like we see here. It's been there a long time. Uh, and, and then the city annexes property right across the street and allows single-family dwellings. Not a uh, hindsight being what it is, obviously, that's something. And you see a little bit of a buffer in terms of the, what's between the east side of P Street and the fence for those houses. But that certainly wasn't enough to, to mitigate, uh, at least in the view of those people that live there, the activity going on, uh, on in an I-2 zone, which is the heaviest industrial zone this city has. Probably the, um, the person that had the business or the company was there before the annex property. So it's like I lived out in the country underneath right, the Navy base, right next to the Navy base, grew up there, and could, they would wave. They flew so low, the pilots, we could wave, and we know their numbers. But my father told me and told all of us, we don't complain because they were here before us, and we knew they were there when we built the house. I think a per prime example of what was happening is Mr. Marita was talking. Yeah. You have all these houses building, being built right across the street from an airport. That airport and those helicopters and everything were there long before the houses. We can't change an airport because you chose to develop. And the same here. We're putting, yes, I think it's wrong that we have an industrial zone right across the street from residential, but it was allowed to happen. And it's just, I feel that it's wrong to make her pay for a hydrant whenever we didn't even require it for the housing that went in across the street. Sure. With you. And when the city was laid out 100 years ago, how much of this was in it was zoned industrial then over time wasn't getting used so therefore somebody said well let's let them put houses there i mean that goes back farther than any of us were ever born and uh like i said there's been multiple upgrades just upgrades done and you know shame on the city for not putting more emphasis on fire protection in the industrial areas when they had a chance because it shouldn't be the property owner's responsibility. It's as the 
city or government, past government, not this government, uh, should, when it has the opportunity to make improvements to infrastructure to make the properties they have more attractive to businesses to want to use them so they don't have to pay that money. But when there's nothing there, that's, you know, it's like, well, gee, you've had this 100 years and you didn't do anything and now suddenly I got to fit the bill for everything? Uh, you know, maybe I'll look at the other industrial park where it's already done. Um, so I think this is a perfect use for this property, at least in the short term. Um, like I said, if she was building a warehouse or a giant building, then I'd say, you know, yeah, you need to put in a hydrant and some other stuff. But we're talking about four, four trucks. That's correct. When you get a fleet of 20, we might have to revisit the hydrant situation. Um, but I think maybe at this point it's, it's, um, I understand what the fire code says. Uh, I understand that they would have to lay line north and then make a turn and go um, east for that. It's a little bit of inconvenience, no doubt about it. I fought a lot of fires in a lot of areas where there weren't hydrants were 800 feet away and we just made do. Um, but this isn't her fault. This is the failure of previous city governments not doing their job. If I can ask, the trucks that you're storing there, are they like double trailered? Oh, sing single. Okay. At that, do you have any other, anything else we need to? I'm just going to ask you what mechanical thing. Here. Sure. It's been sitting for a while. Okay. Right. Has been a lot of back and forth. Okay. 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 All right. Just want to make sure there was not a typo. Thank you. There's any other item questions for the applicant from the commission? Yeah, I do. I haven't even started. Um, those trucks they shut off after five minutes for the same reason: exhaust, uh, EPA. They will shut off whether I'm ready to, to go or not. And they will shut off completely after five minutes. So the noise and the and the uh, the smog and all that, whether the driver likes it, a lot of times it's inconvenience to us. We got to get out, drop the trailer, whatever happens to be, it'll shut off. So we got to reset how, how new the trucks are. Yeah, as, as for um, well, California, if it doesn't do that, you, you can't to drive it. Car. Um, you say that uh, flatbeds, dry vans, and tank. I'm concerned about the tank. Why tanks? What is in those tanks? Mm -hmm. they're, dry, they're dry powder tanks. Uh -huh. where, do you, where are you picking all this stuff up from? Um, Buster City. Where is it going? Banana. So your drivers pick up, say in the morning, empty. They take the product, drop it off, and they come back empty. Okay, that makes a big difference. That, that explains a lot. Uh, why later on does it say, um, where is it? Materials, clothes, racks, retail, food goods. Thanks, Blaine. We use the dry vans, but right now we're using the, the tanks. Once you get into food goods, that changes a lot of things, health yeah. codes and whatnot. Um, you can't be just leaving those trailers. There's much higher uh, standards for that. Uh, that's a dirt lot, right? Is it still dirt? At the moment, yeah. Uh, you have any uh, intention to expand? Yes. Uh, How long have you been in business? Uh, five years. Five years? All out of Imperial? Where did you park your vehicle? El Centro. Where's your office at? Bloomington. 
Bloomington. I live in Bloomington. Wilmington, like on the coast, Wilmington? I'm sorry? Wilmington is... No, Bloomington. Bloomington. By Fontana. Okay, so... Is that where your primary office is run out of? Yes. And then you're just opening up a second location here to just park your trucks. You buy the property or leasing it? Uh, yeah. uh, yes. I, I, you bought it. You don't have a set route going in and out of this yard? Okay. You don't have a set route coming in and out of this yard? A set route. In other words, will you tell the driver, you know what, I'd rather you guys go down into this yard down this street and not oh, yeah. down this street. Mm -hmm. uh, because I see if you guys come west off of 86, once that truck starts to slow down to make that right, right in front of that auto zone, all those cars that are 45, 50, 55, and that truck suddenly slows down, you're going to get rear-ended. Or you can there's come, or you can come from from uh, Baroni. Baroni, how do you say it? Baroni. Baroni. I always kill that. There is a turn lane at Fourth uh, Street off of Eighty Six. It actually has a turn. It's not just you know like the little short ones. It actually has a, a hundred okay. foot, hundred foot left-hand turn lane where the trucks actually get out of the highway and then but you know that why am i telling you <laughs> i just it, it's on, sorry it's, sorry it's just a suggestion i'm looking at all the possible having been a driver having been on both ends in the office and on the road uh, those things that you, you need to pre-plan coming in off of 86 and brianna would be the safer I, again it looks like we we may go off the table with the with the fire with the fire hydrant uh, the only reason that I was kind of persistent on it, uh, I look at it uh, as a insurance policy for you in the event that those one, you lose one, you just lose one, not all of them. Okay, but I know it's inexpensive. I know it's expensive. But I also know what it's like to lose all those trucks in one shot because they couldn't get those fires out fast enough. Okay, I, I'm not. I'm not making it difficult. Trying to make it difficult for you. I still believe in what Mr. Pechtel said. We don't want to be the city that people just go through. People they go to. That's for uh, to live in and to and run their business, in, uh, start their businesses in. Okay. Um, I think I know who your business is out of Wilmington, running that stucco and all of that. Okay. All right. No, I'm, I'm good. All right. Any other commissioners have any more comments or questions for the applicant? Staff, anybody? All right, I'm gonna close the public hearing at this time, uh, 741. So, any further discussion between us before we uh, make a motion or amend, a, or amend a, amend a CUP, which may possibly be the case. Well, I think the walls in the, well, right now the walls in the CUP and the hydrants in the CUP, and if we want to get rid of the wall or we want to get rid of the hydrant, we have to amend the CUP because right now it's in it. What does the county um, have as far as barrier for noise? I don't have that answer. You haven't gone and visited that area? I Down, oh, the, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was county yard. About the, oh, county, the county, county yard. yard. Chain link? I think, it, yeah, it's chain yeah, link. Yeah, it's chain link. Yeah, that is correct. Well, Imperial does not have the best dirt. That's what I'm pointing no, out. Does not have okay? the best dirt. Just give it, give it ten, ten years, and it'll fall over. If it's yeah. done if it poorly, lasts that long. ten. If it's done good, it'll last yeah. thirty. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, and I guess I'm assuming there'll have to probably be a gate in there to get through the. Yes. 
get through the uh, block wall, I'm assuming your trucks are going to go in and out on 4th, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it won't even be a complete wall. It'll have to have a gate in it. Yeah. I just have a chain link. Can you talk to the, um, can you talk to the neighbors, residents? You tell them they're going to put a wall in there, a brick wall? A block wall? I think if we were asking her to do this just for aesthetics, I, I would 100% agree with you. But considering it's being included as a condition for the noise attenuation, I, I'm reluctant to remove to, to vote on removing it because you do have those residences and in lieu of this noise study this is what was decided on to keep to save her that ten to fifteen thousand dollars of doing a noise study they're like okay let's do a masonry wall to just do the best at blocking the noise and I think there's some uh, landscaping that's going to go in to try and absorb the noise also now, instead of paying a uh, professional to analyze and give you a 20 page or a 50 page that says book, you have to put up a block wall, <laughs> you're going to spend the money there. Okay. You're still spending the money. But at the end, I think at the end of the day, a noise study would say you need to put up a block wall. So, not in addition to paying for the noise study, you'd have to still do the block wall. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. The good thing is you own the property. So, you're improving. So, you get to pay more property taxes. <laughs> or sell it to somebody else for more money because of the improvements you've made. Yeah. Um, I I do know we have this, this we're pushing uh, plants and things to help. Uh, I, I'm questioning that right at the moment. One, it's the industrial area. Kind of hard to grow stuff in Imperial in the first place. Um, the industrial area is probably worse. And with the probability that we may I see ourselves getting our water trimmed back even more in the next couple of years, and depending on how things, yeah, right there. Um, I'm just wondering if how wise it is for us to push plants in an industrial area when we may actually have to kill them. And die. <laughs> I will say, uh, Chairman Hammerness, that any landscaping that's done must be drought tolerant. So it, in light of conservation efforts and that, and it needs to be native to the area. So um, we'll do our best with DG and some cacti. Is drought tolerant really that, <laughs> well, that good at absorbing noise? Because they're usually smaller plants. And smaller plants. They're not leafy. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of thought the plant thing was a little bit more aesthetics than noise. Um, I don't know that it's aesthetics when we're asking them to be built on the inside of the wall. It's not like the public's going to see them anyway. Yeah, I was wondering is it on the inside or is it on the outside? I thought it was the outside of the wall. Okay. Outside the, wall. the wall is on the property line and the landscape usually is a part of the right of way. I thought it said in the, I don't have my staff report with me, my computer died. I thought it said on the inside. On a page 11, uh, 8G. No, I was just with the whole fact that the alkali flats is kind of not the best place to grow plants. And with the uh, potential water issues we may have, even with drought resistant stuff, if we have to cut back a lot, yeah, those it. would be areas that we'd be like, hey, it's industrial. You know what? Just we'll learn a worry about it in a few years under the community better. i'm sorry under the community development condition g it does say 15 gallon trees 20 feet on center and shrubbery shall be installed and maintained along the inside of the wall in a five foot wide raised landscape planter mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's, why that's, why that's a typo that. it should be okay. outside the wall okay that doesn't I'm in agreement yeah. with Chair Chairman Hammers and uh, Commissioner I think that's Mendoza. A typo. You know, with respect to the shrubbery and the plants, we're in an industrial area. We don't. It's not going to make any difference where you're going to have some cactus sticking out like this, right? And maybe some little muppets, you know, down there that look that need a haircut. It's not going to do anything. 
I mean, I'm not opposed to, you know, trying to make it look a little bit better, but I do think, and then considering the current situation with the water and everything else, that uh, we might need to be a little much more flexible in those areas, at least for a couple of years. I, I'm just saying we can put it out there, but if they don't get put in and we get our water cut, it's going to be like, hey, you know what, you industrial folks, like, you know, maybe we'll wait a see what things are like in a couple more years but and also I, going off of that they're requiring it to be planted in a raised planter that's more construction expense to build a raised planter yep well it'll all die if it's planted in the ground yeah but i think we're getting we're really going down a rabbit hole here <laughs> um we need to kind of i think <laughs> she wants to get out of here and and about 10 more minutes i'm gonna have to go to the bathroom again so um we need to iron out our <laughs> amendments on the cup if we want to amend anything or not um uh, i'm all for uh i know in the fire department i'm not gonna be real very popular with the fire department i think the hydrants uh, uh, excessive expense considering that use the property is going to have at least for the moment she builds her fleet up to 15 or 20 trucks and i think we might have to revisit that and say you know what it's time to spend the money and put in a hydrant um the wall that's a noise thing um the plants uh that's uh could be an issue i think water wise i mean like i said if we put them in and then we say hey you got to cut your water back and then they all die that's kind of a waste of money um at least under the current conditions so i'm not mistaken in the drought restrictions Trees, you can, still, you can still water trees. You Correct. can't water grass or shrubbery, but you can still water trees. The last time Imperial cut back the water, they didn't make anything specific to trees. El Centro did. El Centro was yeah, right they, they said, make it don't water the lawn, but water the trees. And now we have a bunch Imperial of trees. Imperial was just uh, more about, yeah, you can only water your lawn so much. Yeah. Didn't really, they didn't really say, keep the trees alive, but kill the grass. Um, so Imperial was a little less clear. Anyway, how do we want to uh, how do we want to proceed with the CUP? As far as um, any amendments, changes, anybody have any uh, thoughts on how we want to do this? I'm willing to make a motion, but I just wanted to find out from the rest of the commission how they feel about the landscaping. I'm, I my intent is to make a motion to approve with the removal of the condition of the fire hydrant. I just want to know what the will of the commission is about the landscaping, and I'll include it in my motion. And for dropping the, the trees. Yeah, I think I think under the current. Then, if it is okay with you, Mr. Chairperson, I'm ready to make a motion. Are you talking? About, are you going to make the motion with the wall? Without or with the wall? It, that it's a condition. I'm not going to ask that that be removed. Okay. The only thing we're going to ask to be removed is the landscaping and the fire hydrant. If that's okay with you. Yeah, I just want to think about the so sort of the. How we can exempt her from the hydrogen this time, but not uh, make it so that it's potential that it may have to come back to be revisited. Well, I think that the, the CUP talks about the, the level of service at that lot of what she can have in there. And if she starts increasing the capacity or the uh, increasing the amount of trucks that she's doing there, she's going to have to come back for an amended amendment to her CUP anyway. And we can impose it at that. Right. Time. Because she does specify, I think, four trucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two to four. Yeah. That I think I think that covers our basis. Okay, go proceed. Okay. Um, if I could, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number PC 2022-12, a resolution of the Planning Commission approving CUP 22-02 for Denise Chavez, located at 426 East 4th Street, um, for the uh, conditional use permit to allow a trucking storage facility at that location. And with as part of this approval, the conditional use, we'd like to remove the conditions of the installation of the fire hydrant and the landscaping. And if I may, Commissioner, um, we want to add that this project description on the CUP, which includes the two to four trucks, because it's only stated on the staff report, but not the actual. Okay, then we would like to add that statement yeah, that correct. it is uh, to allow two to four trucks up to, let's say, up, up to, to four, four trucks. Four, up to four. Up to four trucks, at which time, if the capacity increases, they have to come back for an amended correct. CUP. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded.
call for the vote. Motion passes four zero. Uh, there's five of them. Oh wait a minute! There's Sorry. five of them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> who who didn't? Uh... But Chairman Hermanus, your your vote was not recorded. L let me uh, what? Let me fix this real quick. I pushed on it. I saw the number change. It didn't change on our system. Well, I apologize. We're gonna have to recast that vote. There we go. Okay. One more time. I'm gonna wait till last. That yes has the light over. All right, motion passes 5 0. We're in business. Good luck. Please tell your truckers to be careful crossing that road. Before we move on, oh, motion passes. Sorry. Um, so we'll get into um, commissioner's reports. Let's start on this end. Commissioner Body, have anything to report or talk about or bring up? <laughs> well, you know, that's what we're here for. So I see that uh, there's already asphalt poured on the blue street. I think they're putting roads in for the and cut. Um, it's expected on the 23rd. Um, I'll, get, <laughs> I'll get confirmation tomorrow. I'll pass it on to management and then they will provide an update. Uh, yeah, we, we thought so too. But we're pushing. It's going to happen. Second, have we got any plants? Oh, have we got any plants for the uh, rest of Aiden Road? Yes, that should be starting in January. Probably after, after the first. first time. Yes. Okay, yes. great. Yeah, because um, I've, I've heard from people who live here in this town that they like seeing the greenery that that survived the summer heat that planted less earlier this year. Thank you. That's it. Laundry, I had a laundry list of um, things last year. We don't have last time two. for that. Moving yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'll, uh, I'll pass Well, on. you could pick one. No? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Mendoza? Um, yes, as you all know, tonight will be my last planning commission meeting with the rest of you. I thank you very much. And I, I, I extend my thanks to each of you for, for your welcomeness for me on this board. I've, it's been a great learning experience. I think I've learned something from every single one of you. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm ready to get to work for the city and, and, and move on to uh, bigger projects. And, and I know that I'll be receiving stuff that this commission comes through this commission and goes up to council. And, and again, I, I just thank each and every one of you. Um, as far as this month, I, we had a wonderful parade of lights and Christmas in a small town. Thank you to the, the city staff. That was there, there were both awesome events as usual. Um, I did express a little bit of concern to Alexis about the location of our stage. Um, it's a little kind of far out there and kind of separated from, and we don't really get the crowd out there. So I talked to Alexis about that, um, just as a suggestion. And um, I in, make sure, want to make sure that each of you realize that on, I believe it's January 7th at Sunset Park, we're going to have a tree planting event. Um, this kind of is near and dear to my heart. I actually am the project manager for that grant that's providing those trees. So I'm working directly with the city staff on that project. And um, they're going to be planting several trees there. And West Coast Arborist will be on site and giving a workshop, teaching people how to properly plant, care for, and in ensure the, the survivability of the trees. And so I encourage all of you to go there. Um, they're, they're generally fun events, and the city does great in putting them on. So January 7th, I believe it's start, they're starting at, what, Alexis, 9.30 in the morning? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. That that's the part for the workshop, and I believe then the rest of it starts about a half an hour oh, later. Is that a Saturday or weekend? It's a Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. okay. Sunset Park? Yes. So I think they're planting 
I'm going to draw a blank on how many numerous trees. <laughs> um, so we, I uh, hopefully we'll see you all out there. And again, thank you to all of you. And um, I've, I've, I've truly enjoyed being on this commission and I'm looking forward to my new appointment coming up next week. And if any of you are available next Wednesday, I'd be great, be great to see you there um, for the swearing in of all the, the new elect council elects and our city clerk. Vice Chair Hardy. I just want to echo that, that um, congratulations, Stacy, on your um, election to city council. Um, I think that's two commissioners that have gone to city council since I've started on commission. So I'm excited to see what you'll bring to the table and, um, and I'll be following your journey. So congratulations. Um, I'm going to get into one item before I get to the mushy stuff. So, um, so I actually have one thing I would like to bring to the city's attention. It's been a problem for a while. Is the intersection at uh, Rodeo and 15th. We have a huge problem with standing water there every day. And it stinks. I mean, it's stagnant. And more water gets added to it constantly. And it doesn't go anywhere and it doesn't drain. And I was always kind of like, gee, where's the water coming from? Well, finally, my daughter made me get out at like 5 in the morning and go with her exercising, which I'm still aching from. But come to find out, it's the veterinarian's office watering the grass. And they water it for a very long time, and it's running down the sidewalk, and it's running into the gutter, and it's pulling there. And it, they water almost every day. And it, it's, that's where the water's going from. Oh, occasionally there's, you see water that maybe comes farther up the street, but that's where it's coming from. So I don't know whether we need to have our code enforcement guy, you know, stay away from the areas with cars and this, over the sidewalks and maybe go look for for that. But I think, I mean, I'm not opposed to anybody watering their grass and having nice grass. I have nice grass. And some of the water gets on the sidewalk. Sometimes the love it gets in the gutter. It happens. But I, he's got a slope, and I think he's just putting too much water. And that's why it's just running constantly down and it's tearing up the street. I mean, the street's deteriorating out of concrete sinking. It smells terrible. Uh, and it'd be nice if I, and I've mentioned actually other city people saying, Hey, you know, we had a problem here and this is where it's coming from and nothing's happened. So now I'm, you know, taking it to the next level, seeing if maybe we can, uh, you know, do something about that or at least try to help him or the owner of the property, the vet, maybe assist him in how he can take care of his grass without maybe putting so much of it into the street. Well, when if it's in the street, it's not helping the grass grow. And it's tearing up the street, and which I probably to fix that intersection right now would probably be ten thousand bucks, just knowing how expensive asphalt and concrete is. Uh, so there's my one uh, uh, commissioner item I wanted to bring up. Uh, now, after that, I will uh, finish up with my congratulations to Commissioner Mendoza. Um, it's been an honor uh, serving with you. Looking forward to uh, seeing you on the city council. And I will encourage all planning commissioners, if they are available next Wednesday, to make it to the council chambers to uh, uh, see our latest member get uh, move up to the next level of uh, city life and uh, show our support. And with that, I will... Uh, Go to the city. Let's just go around the room. Start over there. Have anything to report? Nothing to add. Uh, Chairman Hammers and Commissioners, just want to echo, we look forward to working with Commissioner Mendoza on the council uh, and hope, indeed, hope that you can uh, make it next Wednesday for the uh, reorganization of the council and, St and Stacy's joining of the council. And Beyond that, happy holidays.
So if I may, Chairman Hermanus, actually the, the issue that you bring up between on Rodeo and 15th, uh, that was actually uh, relayed to the city um, by another resident complaint uh, this past week. And so public services is working with our community development department on that um, as far as educating the property owners. So um, just say that meaning it is on our radar. And that's we'll funny. It just took to... it wasn't just the last week it got on the radar because it's been a problem for like two years. Well, <laughs> you know, better late than never. So, um, otherwise, uh, same sentiments as expressed. So excited for next week and excited for um, the next phase of what I would say is the city's growth and looking forward to those that are going to get to set that vision. So, and in our. Uh... Next meeting, we can maybe figure out where we're at as far as the commissioners are concerned, as far as uh, our life expectancy here and uh, uh, <laughs> who's on solid. the chopping block and who isn't. So you're, you're solid till June, and but yes, we can absolutely outline how that will how that will work once Commissioner Mendoza assumes her um, seat. Um, that immediately vacates her current seat, in which we will notice um, a. Um, publication to accept uh, uh, nominations for that um, and that appointment will fall to um, Ida um, Ida Obeso Martinez that will be her appointment so. I, uh, yeah I watched mine give his final speech so I know I'm in this soup because I watched him He's Mr. Dale so I'm like oh okay <laughs> um Stacy and um, Obeso are yes. the two new ones. Yes. Um, so Mendoza will actually take over Mayor Dale's appointments. Okay. So, and then Mr. Tucker's, I'm assuming, because he's being reelected. So, so, so those three will all have. Yes. Correct. Right. Okay. Inspector Loper, since you're here, do you have anything you'd like to report other than your complete disdain for us on the hydrant situation? <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know. Um, first off, congratulations. Um, great to have, um, you know, moving in with the city and moving on. Um, thank you guys for listening to, um, you know, ICFD today. And we represent, you know, both the county and the city of Imperial. And keep going from here on out. So. Um, thank you for listening and, and taking into our considerations on the items and, and moving here on out with other other stuff. So thank you. Have a good uh, holidays. Thank you. You too. Stay safe out there. Uh, if there is nothing else, then I will call this meeting uh, adjourned at 8 8 8 8 8 8 8 8 8 8 8 8 8